Hello, I'm Omer Khalid. I'm one of the social media editors at Jack Cardiovascular Interventions, and it is my pleasure to invite uh, Dr. Bashir Alur uh, for this interview. Good afternoon, Dr. Alur. How are you doing today? And thank you for joining us today. Uh, brother, good evening from Winchester, Dr. Khalid. Uh, many thanks uh, to you and to the Journal of the American College of Cardiology for your interest in our study and for the opportunity to discuss and throw uh, some more light on the results. Thank you. Uh, we are very excited to feature your publication, which is titled Non-Vitamin K Antagonist versus Vitamin K Antagonist Oral Anticoagulants After Transcatheter Aortic Valve Implantation in a Social Media Section. So if you could kindly begin by telling us very briefly about the Swiss TAVI registry and your study objectives. Sure, yeah, many thanks. So the Swiss TAVI uh, registry is a national multicenter prospective cohort study uh, founded as a collaborative initiative between the Swiss Working Group for Interventional Cardiology and the Swiss Society for Cardiac Surgery. This was founded to assess clinical outcomes of consecutive patients undergoing TAVI in Switzerland. And by consecutive, we mean all comers, which is mandated um, officially uh, and centrally by the Swiss Federal Office uh, for Public Health in uh, Switzerland as a prerequisite uh, for reimbursement. The registry is monitored and adjudicated centrally by a dedicated clinical event committee, and the data is interrogated and analyzed by an assigned clinical trial unit at the University of Bern. Now including over 12,000 patients post-TAVI uh, in the registry, the registry offers a unique opportunity to address in real life important questions and issues surrounding the practice of TAVI. Uh, while taking uh, into consideration, of course, the dynamicity of the practice at clinical and technical levels. Uh, in our study, uh, we sought to review uh, that or sort of re to revive even that question about the safety and efficacy of oral anticoagulants in patients undergoing TAVI with established indications for anticoagulation. And we did so by comparing the most relevant long-term outcomes associated with vitamin K antagonist and non-vitamin K antagonist anticoagulants in a propensity score matched uh, manner. Uh, this is of course of significant relevance to contemporary practice with the expansion of TAVI indication outside the sphere of adrenaline to healthier and younger cohorts with longer life expectancy. Perfect. Thank you so much for your answer. Um, I was looking through the paper. It looks like you opted for the net clinical benefit rather than the composite efficacy endpoint. If you could kindly elaborate on that choice, it would be great. Yeah, yeah of course. Well, thanks for asking this. So, uh, well, anticoagulation is one of our, our finest examples of a therapy where the clinicians are actually caught, uh, caught up in a safety efficacy uh, quagmire. Therefore, a composite uh, outcome encompassing most relevant safety and efficacy endpoint would seem uh, reasonable in this setting. In our study, we define net clinical benefit as the composite of all-cause mortality, myocardial infarction, stroke, and life-threatening or major bleeding. Nevertheless, all endpoints were also reported individually, in addition to various composites of safety and efficacy endpoints. All endpoints in our study were defined in accordance with the Valve Academic Research Consortium uh, definitions of outcomes. Perfect. Thank you for that answer. And on that note, Dr. Alur, moving on, if you could uh, also describe the important results of your study. Of course. Uh, so uh, it was actually only after the periprocedure phase when differences um, uh, phase uh, when differences in the outcomes started to surface. At one year, uh, there was no significant difference in the net clinical benefit, nor was there any difference in the primary safety and point of major life uh, threatening uh, or measure of, or, sorry, of major or life threatening bleeding. Uh, however, the rate of all cause mortality was significantly higher in the vitamin K um, antagonist group, and so was the rate of myocardial infarction. Now, stretching to five years, the net clinical benefit still did not differ between the propensity matched groups. However, vitamin K antagonist was still, was still associated with higher rates of all-cause mortality, and most intriguingly, to say the least, uh, after excluding the periprocedural events, NOAC was associated with significantly higher rates of disabling stroke, a sub-analysis finding that uh, should be of, shouldn't be really dismissed, uh, although uh, ought to be interpreted with caution. That's great. No, thank you for um, describing the results. And, uh, and I know this is a very good data, but it's coming from a registry. So uh, could you highlight, in your opinion, the single most important strength and limitation of your study? 
Uh, yeah, sure. So in my, in my opinion, the single most important strength in, in this study is the inclusivity of the propensity score matching. Of the 3,867 patients, including in the study, uh, precisely 75% of them were including in the, included in the one-to-one -one propensity score uh, matched groups, translating into uh, around 1,454 one, one, 1, patients in each group. And this was despite um, the matching for 20 highly relevant characteristics and domains. Further, the hazard ratios were further adjusted for the STS score and cluster robustified for the year of TAVR to remove residual effects on mortality. Therefore, uh, we believe the, the data um, is strongly representative of overall population. Um, of the limitations, um, of course, due to historical practice, uh, the mean age in our study uh, was uh, 82 years. Therefore, caution is required if the results are to be extrapolated to more contempor contemporary TAVI cohorts likely to include healthier and younger patients. Perfect. Thank you so much for your answer, uh, Dr. Alur. And lastly, uh, given these results and your understanding of the results, any suggestions going forward? Sure. So we certainly endorse uh, the need for randomized controlled trials dedicated to patients with low to intermediate risk profile um, and those with longer life expectancy. Um, and um, in addition to this, of course, we also uh, think that real life validation of the results in large robust registries similar to our registries um, um, are, are needed because this uh, at least could bypass the potential selectivity of randomized controlled trials. And of course, uh, in matters related to anticoagulation, we know that um, in randomized controlled trials, um, the anticoagulant agent is given the opportunity to outperform itself in real life due to meticulous and more robust mon monitoring in, in, in randomized controlled trials. Uh, therefore, uh, of course, robust registries are good platforms for proper reality checks and checks in, in similar setting. Absolutely. Well, thank you, Dr. Allur, for uh, we really, for sharing these insightful results. We really appreciate your time and congratulations Pleasure. on your work. Pleasure. Yeah, thank you very much again, and uh, all the best to you. And we look forward to the very constructive feedback of the readers of your journal. Of course. Thank you. Take care. Thank you. All the best.